Um, hi, I'm Caitlin. I am a Rails developer. I also do a bit of work with Ember. I've been working, uh, working recently with Phaser, which has been super fun, making games. Um, and Ash asked me to come talk tonight about pair programming, which is actually something I do a lot of. Um, so I'm a junior developer. I've been working as a developer since June of last year. Um, and we've got a really small uh, consultancy. We've got six developers on our, you know, in our entire company. And it's really good that we actually do spend a lot of time working together. Um, and I'm just going to have a quick chat about why that's awesome. Um, so this is uh, this is what we look like when we pair program. <laughs> this is one of my favorite books of all time, and it just keeps on getting better every time. <laughs> you just look at it; it's great. Um, okay, so that's not what paired programming is. Um, obviously, I think most of us realize you can't have two people typing on a keyboard at a time. I'm going to come back to something related to that later, though. Um, so, in terms of why you should pair program, a lot of people aren't super comfortable with it. Um, a lot of people, you know, are very protective of their code and their coding habits. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, great reasons to do it, especially if you're working with, um, you know, a pair that's different levels of experience. Um, it's particularly great for um, working with juniors. Um, a lot of the time, especially in um, an industry like this, there's things that you don't know and you don't know you don't know them and you don't know that you don't know them until someone tells you that you don't know them and it's great. Um, <laughs> it's really hard, especially as a junior, um, trying to figure out what questions to ask and one of the best ways to do that is actually if you're working through a problem and someone's seeing you know, where you're getting stuck or where your thought process is going as it's happening. Um, it's a lot easier to kind of just divert that as it's happening than come back to it when you've you know, completed a whole feature and it's in code review um, and trying to sort of pull it apart and start it from fresh. What? Yeah. I'm not paying attention to what the screen is which. Um, yeah, it's easy to pick up errors while you're building it, then reviewing it. Um, you're looking at it in more detail. You're thinking, you know, in the actual practice of it. You can also see it running without having to actually download the branch and, you know, run it and, you know, like, click through everything. You're actually seeing it while it's being built. So it's a lot easier to pick up, you know, things that might not have been noticed otherwise in a, in a code review. Um, it's great for mentoring, not just for teaching, but also for figuring out what needs to be covered. So if you're actually working through something, uh, gives you lots of opportunities to just ask little questions that might be directly related or just you know a little aside uh, and gives you ideas in terms of where your juniors need a bit more focus and where they need a bit more training or where they might need you know some resources suggested etc uh, if it's uh, two more experienced developers it actually is going to make you a lot less li uh, likely to rush through something uh, it's going to make you a lot more uh, inclined to do your best work because there's someone else who you hopefully respect if you're working with them um, that's looking at what you're doing and again it's sort of not a negatively critical but a more critical in terms of picking up those little things you might not otherwise when you're working through something together <coughs> um, and it also means that you know you can discuss those sort of larger picture items as you get to them everybody gets to learn something so obviously none of us know everything um, and so it's really good to, if there are more experienced people but pair programming together, make sure that people with like different areas of expertise. Um, it also helps you focus. You're less likely to, you know, pull out your phone while someone's sitting next to you, especially if it's your boss. <laughs> less likely, not not going to. Um, okay. I still feel like I'm not quite up to date with where I'm talking when I say. Anyway, uh, in terms of when you want to pair program, okay. I think that you can pair program anytime, you just don't want to do it all the time. Um, obviously there's a lot of, um, you know, there is a lot of sort of double up of time that's used when you've got two people working on something. Um, some of the particular times that's really good is it's, if someone's new to a project, they don't have a lot of domain knowledge of that particular, you know, area of, the, um, of an app or something. And so them working with someone who's got more experience, they're going to be able to answer those questions straight away and give them a bit more of a well-rounded understanding of what the whole purpose is and how things fit together. Only, I should put only at the start, only when people have the right attitude. You don't want to, you know, have people being forced to work together uh, when they really don't like it. If it's something that's important to your company, make sure it's something that you're discussing in interviews and make sure it's still something you're introducing well. It's not going to end well. It's not going to be productive if you're making people do it when they hate it. <coughs> 
also not necessarily good when you're really, really at like the, you know, the time intensive end of a project. If you've got a deadline coming up and you really just need to get stuff finished, pair programming does take longer. It makes better code. So in the long run, when you've got, you know, a long, um, you know, time frame of a project ahead of you, it can be time efficient um, and, you know, makes your project better at the end and then less time to fix the things because there's less things that need fixing. Um, but definitely not something you want to spend a lot of time on when, um, when things are quite tense. Um, on that again, make sure you're doing it early in the project when big new features are being introduced. Um, so when you're looking at like the overall architecture of things, that's when it's really good to have, you know, to stop and actually have conversations about things rather than just sort of pushing through. <coughs> the order of this wasn't super well thought out, but yeah, making sure that people are actually comfortable giving and receiving feedback from whoever they're working with. So different people in your teams might not have the best um, you know, working relationships, and so making sure you're selective about who you're pairing together so that it's not you know, working against them. Um, a lot of people are more comfortable giving feedback in code review. A lot of people will not you know, criticize in a constructive way even when they're face to face with someone. If you've got people like that, pair programming isn't gonna necessarily be for them. <coughs> and just a couple of last little tips. Um, use a wireless keyboard so you can actually pass between people. Um, in a lot of pair programming, <laughs> yeah, okay, so not necessarily both people like typing away on it at once, um, but being able to pass between people is really good. In a lot of pair programming, you've got one person who's just sort of sitting there talking, which is a bit of a waste of time sometimes. A lot of time it does save a lot of time to type something out rather than trying to explain to someone where to do it. Um, if you have one less experienced person, though, make sure they're using the keyboard most of the time. Otherwise, the more experienced person is just going to stream through things and get carried away, get in the flow of things, and the junior is going to have no idea what's going on. They're not learning anything. It's wasting their time being there. <coughs> um, mixing up pairs and experience levels, so making sure that people aren't necessarily working with the same people all the time, working with lots of different people, um, both more and less experienced. So the whole more senior, more junior person doesn't just need to be for actual juniors, it can be for you know, mid-levels, it can be for seniors, there's always going to be someone who's more experienced at something, so make sure it's mixing up. Um, as I mentioned before, make sure you're saving it for the big picture tasks, you know, don't have two people working on changing, you know, the size of a text box or a label or adding a menu button, um, but make sure it's sort of bigger picture stuff that you actually need to have those discussions about. Um, if it's not happening, like in our company, we just kind of will slack someone and say, hey, do you have a second? I want to go through something and it works really naturally um, because it's something that's in the culture of the company. To get that into the culture, make sure you're scheduling it so people get used to doing it and used to having that back and forth with people as they're working on things. But don't force it. If people hate it, don't make them do it. It's not that great. <laughs> it is great though. All right, thank you. <laughs>